Let's do a calculation involving a sparingly soluble salt, silver chloride, and a very soluble salt, sodium chloride. The KSP, the solubility product for silver chloride, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. For sodium chloride, we don't report a KSP because it's very soluble. Sodium and chloride ions dissociate completely in solution, and the KSP would be very much bigger than 1. In fact, we really only report KSP, solubility products, for salts that are sparingly soluble that have Ks less than 1. So all sodium salts, really, and all chlorides are very soluble. So they dissociate completely, and you can assume safely 100% dissociation in water. Silver chloride, much less than 100% dissociation. If you write the solubility reaction for silver chloride, silver chloride solid going to silver and chlorine ions in solution, and you say, how much would dissolve? Well, initially, you put a chunk of solid sodium or silver chloride in solution. Initially, you have no ions of chlorine and silver. But some will dissolve, a small amount X. So a small amount X dissolves would form X molar ions of silver and X molar ions of chlorine. And at equilibrium, you would have X molar chloride ions, X molar silver ions. So the solubility product looks like the concentration of silver times the concentration of chlorine. So X times X equals KSP. I've written that here. X squared is KSP. So X, the concentration of silver or the concentration of chlorine or the solubility of silver chloride is 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter. So not a very soluble salt. Doesn't matter if I put more solid silver chloride in the flask. The equilibrium has been reached, and the product of the silver ions and the chlorine ions always has to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10th. So adding more silver doesn't affect the concentration. Adding more silver chloride does not affect the concentration of silver ions and chloride ions in solution. How about we dissolve silver chloride in 0.2 molar sodium chloride. So if we have 0.2 molar sodium chloride, then there's already 0.2 molar sodium ions and 0.2 molar chloride ions in solution. The sodium ions don't do anything. They're not involved in this equilibrium. And when sodium and chlorine ions are in solution, they stay as sodium chloride, the, the separate ions. But when silver and chloride ions are together in solution, they tend to precipitate to form sodium silver chloride. So let's see that happening. We'll take an initial solution with no silver ions and 0.2 molar chloride ions from our sodium chloride. We'll put in a chunk of solid silver chloride. And when we do that, a little bit will dissolve, forming x molar more silver ions and x molar more cl chloride ions. So that at equilibrium, you'll have x molar silver ions and 0.2 plus x molar chloride ions. So the product of these two in solution has to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10, the equilibrium constant. And I notice that x is going to be very small compared to 0.2. That's because this equilibrium constant is very small, so this reaction doesn't go very far towards the products, so these concentrations x are small. And I think they'll be very small with, with respect to 0.2. So this 0.2 plus x is essentially 0.2. It's 0.2 plus a tiny amount. So let's approximate that as exactly 0.2. And then the math is relatively simple. We can solve for x is 8.0 times 10 to the minus 9. So what we have is an X concentration, silver ion concentration, uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 9. That's 10 to the fourth times less soluble than without the chloride ions in solution. So this common ion reduces the solubility of silver chloride by a factor of 10 to the fourth. 
That's the common ion effect, and this is how we do common ion effect calculations.